Welcome to LHA Church. You're about to hear another inspirational message from Pastor Jerry Galloway, lead pastor here at Lighthouse Assembly. It's our prayer that this message is an encouragement and blessing to your life. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, if you'll turn with me to John 17, and we're going to get there in just a few moments, I will... If you'll listen quick this morning, I'll talk quick this morning. John chapter 17 is where we're heading today. John chapter 17. I want to ask you, have you ever had situations in your life that have left you being known for something that was never intended? It was never your plan, never your purpose. There are many who go through difficulties in this life and They're left uh, feeling as though they have no greater value than the situations they've been or maybe the things they've been labeled as. Feel as though there's a cloud hanging over their head. A cloud that just won't leave because of the difficulties they've walked through in this life. For many, their value has been robbed at the hands and the action of another. Many are going through and have gone through situations in life that have left them feeling empty, abandoned, lost, and confused. Does it seem, my friend, that the trials of this life have left you confused about the plan and the will of God for your life? You ever had a time when you ask God, where are you, God? I'm walking through this. Where are you? Where are you in my situation? Where are you in my circumstances? God, I can't feel you. Where are you at, God? Does it seem like the trials of life have somehow altered God's destiny for your life? We've been talking over the last few weeks about grace. This morning, I want to continue to share with you on this powerful and this magnificent gift we know as grace. This morning, my prayer is to share with you some stories from the Word of God, some stories about some people when the world had labeled them one thing, God came in and brought a new identity and a destiny for their lives. It is the identity found in grace. You see, His grace gives us a new identity. The Bible says once we were in darkness, now we're in light. Once we were the children of destruction, but now we are the sons and the daughters of God. We have a new identity, friend. We've been adopted into the family of God. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We have a new destiny. The Bible says if you are in Christ, you are a new creation. Everything's been in the past. The old is gone, and behold, all things have become new. See, we have a new destiny, but not only a place called heaven, but eternal life, my friend, changes everything about how we do things in this life in the here and now. You see, eternal life is not just a quantity of time, but it's a quality of existence based on the knowledge of Jesus Christ. John 17, Jesus praying, said these words, Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, who you sent. Now this is eternal life, that they know you. Knowing God, for in knowing God gives us a new destiny. Suddenly when we come to know Jesus Christ as Savior Lord, the Bible says the steps of righteous people are ordered by the Lord. Before we knew Christ, listen friends, someone who doesn't know Jesus, their steps are left to themselves. So a righteous person has a destiny where God is working all things together for the good in their lives and in the lives of the kingdom of God. Romans 8 and 28, for we know, and I want to emphasize those first words, we know. Friend, you've got to resolve this. You've got to settle this. Because there's sometimes there's circumstances that are going to take place in your life that are going to make you say, I think God's went on a vacation in my life. Maybe God helps them, but God's not helping me. Romans 8 and 28, for we know that in all things, somebody say all things. 
All things. That means the good, bad, the ugly, and everything in between. We know that in all things, God works for the good. Say the good. He works for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. God is guiding our steps even when we don't notice it. The steps of a righteous person are ordered by the Lord. Psalm 37 and 23 says he delights in every detail of our lives. That's a good scripture, isn't it? He delights in every detail of our life. So here is God. He's delighting in the details of your life. And the more you're walking close to him, the more you're going to be able to be guided by him and keeping in his perfect plan and keeping his perfect will for your life. You see, friend, it's a new destiny. It's a new chapter. It's new things that God is doing in our lives because he's the God who makes all things new. You see, this is really good news for every person in this room because every one of us, I shared with you last week, every one of us has a past. Every one of us has things in our life we wish we hadn't done. Every one of us have decisions we wish we'd have made. You ever wish you could have a do-over? I could go over and change that whole thing. But the truth is it's our past and we can't. But I'm thankful to know today That it's not just about my present and my future. But my God is able in my past. God is able to bring me out of what I used to be. Because he has a destiny for my life. My life is not left to what the world says I will be. Or what man says I will be. But what God says I will be. For he's the master of the ceremonies. And he's in charge of my life. Things that shape you and I. Things that unconsciously and unknowingly we find ourselves reacting against. Things that have the ability to uh, cause a warping effect on our life through our own actions or the actions of someone else. And things are changed. And we're trying to put the pieces of the puzzle back together again. But my friend, when you and I can't get it together, he is able to make the rough way smooth. He begins to make the ground level in front of us. And he begins to transform our lives. Why? Because he has a destiny and a purpose for your life. Jeremiah 29, 11. Most of you probably know it well. Do not forget the words. For I know the plans I have for you. God is a God of purpose. God is a God of plans. God is a God of destiny. God is a God of grace. Can you say amen? Amen. It's the identity of his grace. Now, as you walk through the word of God, what you'll find there are several people who what God does is he brings a change to their life. But when he does that, he renames them. Not just, how many of y'all ever, how many of y'all ever wish your parents had named you something else? Maybe you didn't like your first name or your middle name and you thought, what were they thinking when they gave me that name? What on earth were they thinking? I always want to be named something else. You know, friends, we want to see a change often in our lives, but we're not sure how how to bring that change about. The Bible says God would take individuals and he would rename them, not just because he wanted to give them another name, but he renamed them so the new name would line up with the destiny and the purpose that he had for them down the road. So this morning, we're going to look at some people who met God. And when they met God, it changed who they were and it changed where they were heading. This is incredible when you think about God working in your life and where God wants to take you and where God wants to take me. Listen, friend, I believe with all my heart the best is yet to come. And we often say around here the best is yet to come at Lighthouse. And if that's true at Lighthouse, it will only be possible because the best is yet to come in your life. God changes our identity so that it will line up with our destiny. Genesis chapter 17. There's a woman in this story by the name of Sarai. She's the wife of a man by the name of Abraham. 
She's the story of one that God changed her name so that it would line up with the destiny that he had for her because she could not go where God wanted her to be with the name, the earthly tag, the earthly label that had been given to her. Genesis 17 verses 15 and 16 says this, God also said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife. Now, Sarai, you, you must understand what's significant about this. The word Sarai means bitter, bitter one. Now, if you know the history of Sarai, she had wanted to conceive and have children but was unable to. She was bitter of soul because of her inability to conceive. When you look at her life, you can see that this name fits her perfectly. Notice the words to Abraham from God. He said, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Let me tell you something, friend. As believers, when we see somebody change, you need to start speaking life into them. Don't start saying, well, I remember them when. And I remember what they used to do. And I remember the kind of person they used to be. And I remember the kinds of things they used to say. And I remember they were a worrier. And I remember they were a person of anxiety. And I remember they were a liar. How many of y'all know anybody that's been a liar? Even our own selves, huh? And often we'll say, well, that's how I know them. I'm glad God doesn't do that with me. God told Abraham, stop calling her the one who's bitter. Stop calling her the one that's bitter because I have something better for her. I have something that you can't imagine and she can't imagine. The word says, you're no longer to call her Sarah. Her name will be Sarah. Now, what's the significance to you and I? It's the change of one letter. What's the significance? Sarah means bitter one, but Sarah means beautiful mother of princes. God said, I will bless her. I will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that, notice this, so she'll be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. God was saying, I'm changing your identity so that it'll line up with your destiny. You see, her past didn't line up with her future. God had a plan for her. The world had labeled her one way. But God, but God, i got to emphasize that. But God was rewriting her life. Aren't you thankful today he rewrites our life? Aren't you thankful today he could take my brokenness and he could put it back together? Jesus Christ can change your life. Let's look at another one. There's a man by the name of Isaac. Isaac had a son named Jacob. Jacob's name means supplanter, a deceiver. And the Bible tells us he lived up to his identity. His identity was influencing his destiny. He is the one who cheated his brother Esau out of the birthright and then later it was Jacob and his mother who cheated his brother Esau out of the blessing because when a father was near death and Isaac had come to this place when he was going to go by the way of the grave the father would speak his blessing over the eldest son which was Esau the blessing should have come but they deceived him and the blessing instead went upon Jacob now, Genesis 32 records for us that sometime later in Jacob's life that he had an encounter with the Lord. Aren't you glad sometimes we have an encounter with the Lord? I'm glad he found me on the road I was heading and he encountered me. I'm glad he intersected what I had going. I'm glad he intersected the plan that I had going. Because you see, if I'd had my own way, I wouldn't even be here today. He had an encounter with God. And in that encounter, the Lord asked him this. He said, what is your name? What is your name? What is your identity? God said, I've got something different for you. For your name will no longer be Jacob, the deceiver. But your name shall be Israel, the prince of God. For you have striven with God and with man, and you have 
prevailed. God said, I'm changing your identity because I'm changing your destiny. You're going to go from being the deceiver. You're going to go from being the supplanter. You're going to be the crooked one, and I'm going to take you to be the prince of God. Another one we can look at is a young man by the name of David. When David was about to be uh, excuse me, when God was about to anoint another king over Israel, Saul, God had abandoned. And God was going to anoint and raise up another leader. God told the prophet Samuel, I want you to go to the house of Jesse. When you get there, I want you to have all of Jesse's boys come and stand before it. The one that I tell you to anoint, he's going to be the next king. So I don't know how the message got down to Jesse, but Jesse got all the boys cleaned up, said, I want you to put on your best clothes. I want you to start acting the way you're supposed to act. Stand up straight. Act, comb your hair. Be right. The prophet Samuel's coming to the house. He's going to choose the next one of you to be the king over Israel. This is a big deal, folks. It's kind of like somebody coming to your house and having your kids line up and say, one of these is going to be the next president. You're going, oh, Jesus. (laughs) This could be a bad day. (laughs) And so what happens is prophet Samuel comes to the house and Jesse gets all of these boys and they come in. He gets the short and he gets the brave. He gets the strong ones, the good looking ones. Gets the smart ones, lines them all up. And they're all standing before the prophet Samuel and he looks at each one individually. And as he looks one, God says, nope, that's not it. Nope, he's not it. Nope, he's not it. Nope, he's not it. Gets all the way to the end and God says, they ain't, he's not here. What do you mean he's not here? And so Samuel looks at Jesse and says, is this all your boys? Because God sent me here. I know what God said. Listen, God will always be true to his word, even when the circumstances don't look like it. He said, God sent me here to anoint one. We're going to anoint one today, but these boys are not it. Do you have any more? And he says, well, yeah, I'm kind of embarrassed to say we, we have one. Everybody has that one in their family, don't we? (laughs) We have one. And actually, you know what? He's kind of the runt of the family. And we have him sitting out on a hill out there by himself. You know, we we didn't think it was important to bring it. We sent him out there. He's watching the sheep while we're all here on this important day doing this important stuff. You know, we just, we didn't think that much of it. So we just sent him on out there. Samuel said, I want you to go and get that boy and bring him here. When David walked through the door, the Lord said to Samuel, that's the one, anoint him. Friends, when everybody has labeled you insignificant, when everybody has said you'll never accomplish anything, when everybody else has said you can't do it, you won't do it, you'll never be able to do it, how many of you know that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or even imagine? You see, God is not limited by the things that we limit it with. God doesn't care whether you're short, tall, or anything else. God doesn't care about your age. God doesn't care about where you grew up. He doesn't care about your family situation. He doesn't care about your past. But what God wants to do is he wants to give you a new identity that will line up with your destiny. For if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. He wants to make all things new. All things. You see, the family could only see him as a little shepherd boy. But God saw in him the heart of a king. The family only seen him as a little boy with a slingshot. But God saw him as a mighty warrior killing giants. Listen, friend, don't let your past or what other people have called you to be, don't let it limit what God wants you to be. Don't allow what others destined for you to override the destiny that God has for your life. It's time to break free from the labels that have been placed on us and to begin to walk in the purpose, the plan, and the destiny that God has for us. Another person we can look at, last of all, is a man by the name of Simon. Jesus, we find in John chapter 1, is teaching, and as he's teaching, two men come. One is named Andrew, 
And the other one is a man by the name of Simon. Andrew and Simon are brothers. And they come to meet Jesus for the first time. And Jesus looks at him and he says, you are Simon. Now, what's the significance of the name Simon? Simon means reed. Along the Sea of Galilee, there are reeds. They are thin and what would happen is when the tides would come in and the waves would come in, anything around the reeds would change their disposition. If a breeze came in, it would blow them back and forth. If the waves came in, it would move them around. They were not solid and steady. They were constantly vacillating and they were constantly changing. That's what Simon means. So we get the idea from his name, he's a person of instability. And when you look at his life, that's absolutely correct. In the middle of that, Jesus looks at him and he says, you have been unstable. You've been unstable, but I have a different plan for you. I have a different destiny for you. I'm going to call you Peter. Why is that important? Because Peter's the exact opposite of Simon. Simon was a reed, unstable, but he says, you're going to be Peter. Peter means a rock, solid, unmovable. I'm going to call you Peter. You're not going to be the unstable, unreliable one you've always been. Oh, that's a good word for somebody today. You're not going to be the unreliable one. You're not going to be unstable. You're going to be a rock through whom I can do great things. Jesus had a different destiny and identity for him. Now, the truth is, the truth is when we look at the story, we say, well, did he immediately become a rock? No. I'm so glad to know that he's patient with us. I'm so glad to know he's progressively working in us and he's constantly, I'm glad he hasn't given up. I'm glad he didn't just stop on me a few years back, but every day he's constantly working in me. You know, Peter... He's the one also who said to Jesus before his crucifixion, a time of, of great difficulty, he said, I'll never deny you. We know it turned, and he denied him three times. You ever had things you said, I'll never do that. I'll never be like that. I'll never respond like that. How many of y'all ever done that? I have. And he denies him three times. But the truth is today, friend, situations in life do not stop God's plan. They do not stop God's purpose. It didn't stop what God had for Peter's life. And it will not stop what he has for your life. He's still working all things together for the good. The enemy may have meant it for harm. But God can bring healing and restoration out of our trouble. Situations may have looked like it was over for Peter, but God was not done with him. God didn't run out on Peter, and he won't run out on you. So what we find is Jesus doing a work in Peter, and his name begins to line him up with his destiny. And later we find in Galatians chapter 2, he's listed as one of the pillars of the church in Jerusalem. God changes the identity to line up with the destiny. So let's bring this around this morning. Let's bring this around to your life and my life. Friend, if you are a child of God, if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have an identity that is different and your past will always try to keep your life labeled in the past. I talked to you last week about people who can't go, let go of the past and let the grace of God come in and release them from their past. Friend, our past tries to keep us tethered to the shore. Maybe through the words of other people. Sometimes, how many of you know our own words can be used against us? You and I must come to a place, we must come to an awareness that we are a different person now. You have a different identity. 
I'm not who I used to be by the grace of God. I don't do what I used to do by the grace of God. I'm not living in the place that I used to live by the grace of God. I will not be what I used to would have been by the grace of God. It's a new you. Many people come to Christ and never really make the connection of their identity and their destiny. For many of us, we are labeled just like Sarai was labeled, David was labeled, on and on the list can go. There are many others in the word where God changed their name to line it up with their destiny. Sometimes we can only see where we've been. I heard someone say the other day, they said, when you're going through life, you ever realize how small the rearview mirror is, but how big the windshield is in your car? Friend, it's small for one reason. You only occasionally look back there. You've got this huge opportunity before you. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. You say, but yeah, you don't know what I've done. Listen, friend, you don't know what I've done. You don't know what Peter's done. You don't know what Sarah had done. We all have a past, but I can tell you this. We all have a future in Jesus Christ. He is stronger than those things. He's stronger than those mountains that lay before us. He's stronger than our circumstances. He's stronger than anything we face. It's the identity of his grace. He can take what once was and make it brand new. Would you bow your heads this morning? Father, in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for the men and women in this room today. Men and women who have wrestled with areas of their life, past decisions, past uh, things they've done, past actions, past words that have been spoken, past motivations, things that they feel like they're never going to get free and released from. Father, I pray today in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, your hand to be upon them today. And I pray in the name of Jesus, God, you would give hope, hope for discouragement. Hope for hopelessness. I pray, Father, that you would give hope and the expectancy, God, that you're able to turn things around. God, what the enemy meant for harm, God, you can take those broken pieces, and God, you can put it back together, and God, you can make all things new. God, you can make my future better than what my past has ever been. God, all I have is broken pieces, but you're able to take the broken pieces and give life. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray all across this room. God, you'd help us to receive that identity we have in you so that we can fulfill our destiny because, Lord, we'll never get to our destiny if we keep the label we've always had. So, Father, today, Father, today would you help, would you touch, would you strengthen, and would you give hope? Would you give hope for them, I pray, that, Father, their best days are not behind them, but in you their best days are before them. Amen. Father, encourage their hearts, I pray, in the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Would you stand with me this morning? Here's how I'd like to close our time together today. I'll be honest with you. There's sometimes I wrestle with past things that I've done too. I know I may be the preacher and I know I may stand behind the pulpit. But I fight the same battles you face. And I can tell you the purpose of those things is a sideline. 
get us to sit on the sidelines and not move forward. And I don't know what things are there, but some of you today, you've been wanting to press on and reach more for what God has for your life. But you don't feel like you're ever going to get there. Because maybe a label that you've put on yourself or somebody else has put on yourself or maybe some shame or embarrassment or something is keeping you back. God wants to give you hope. God wants to give you hope. I would tell you also today if you've come to this house of worship, you've got a need in your life that you and I serve the God of all hope. There's nothing too hard for our God. Nothing too difficult. So I'd like to close our time together today by offering, I'd love to to have the opportunity to pray with you today because I know this, the destiny that God has for you is greater than you can imagine for he said himself, I know the plans that I have for you. So today, friend, if you've come and you've got a need today, if you've come and you you want to fulfill your destiny and all that God has for you, you say, I don't want anything to hold me back for fulfilling God's purpose in my life. If that's you, my friend, Paula's going to begin to sing, and if she does, I'd like to encourage you to step out. We want to pray with you today. We want to believe with you today for God to do something. If you'd like prayer, would you just step out? Let's believe him today. His power is greater. His power is stronger. His grace is sufficient for our lives. For nothing can hold us back in him. No mountain is too big. No river too deep. No trouble too difficult for our God today. For our God today. For our God today. Just keep coming, friend. Just keep coming if you want prayer today. Church, as they're here and Paul is leaving, would you just be in prayer? Would you just be in prayer for those that have come forward today? I'd like some prayer words to come and join with me this morning. Let's believe together. All things are possible today to them that believe in Jesus.
today, Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord, for this great house to come into and worship you freely. We thank you, Lord, that you know our name, God, and that, Lord, you're not looking at our past. You, God, are excited and have purpose and blessing for our future. I pray for every single person in the congregation today, God, that, Lord, their hearts and their eyes would be, God, turned and lifted up to you, Jesus, and that, God, our hearts would be full, God, of the grace, God, you've already given us. I pray blessing upon the congregation today, God. I pray, God, you would be with them all week, God. Help them to stay faithful to you, Lord, and to keep you first, tops priority. You're the deal, Lord, and we love you so much. Can we just give the Lord another hand clap of praise to him today? Because we love you, Jesus. And we give you all praise today, Jesus. You're so awesome to us, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, God bless you. Stay faithful in prayer. Stay faithful in the word all week. God be with you. We love you. God bless you.